everybody. I'm graduating senior Casey Gooch, and I am pleased to welcome you to our 2020 commencement ceremony. Before the ceremony begins, we have a quick announcement to make. Unlike previous graduation ceremonies, air horns and other noisemakers are allowed this time because nobody can hear you, so make all the noise you want. Singing our national anthem is my friend and fellow senior, Christina Jean. Oh, so But so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets were. Good evening. I'm Mark Okeson, principal of Career Tech High School. On behalf of our faculty, we are pleased to showcase this class of 2020 as they leave us to begin their next phase of life. Before we begin honoring our graduates, I also want to say thank you to the true educational architects of these graduates, our teachers. Our teachers, far more than myself, make our school what it is. Our teachers work every day to help students sharpen their critical thinking, raise their analytical abilities, and foster civic mindedness. So to our staff, this night is also very much a celebration about you. You have done good work and these fine young people are the exponents of your sincere efforts. So thank you. I also want to acknowledge four staff members who are leaving us this year. Retiring from our tech family along with myself is our longtime nurse, Connie Staley, our fitness departments, Coach Jamie Smith, our math departments, Mr. Tony Christich, and also leaving us this year from our resource department, Mr. Steve Ratzlaff. We so appreciate the four of you for your contributions to our school and we thank you on behalf of the thousands of students you have helped. We wish you well in your next chapter. From all of us to you, all the best. We would like to recognize our guests joining us tonight, strong school supporters who often work behind the scenes to make our school look good and function well. Our principal, Mr. Mark Okusin, our assistant principal, Mr. Jim Simmons. Our senior class counselor, Mrs. Bonnie Wolvick. Our senior class advisor, Ms. Kathy Kern. And now we would like to introduce our senior class counselor, Ms. Bonnie Wolvick. Good evening, I am Bonnie Wolvick, senior class counselor. Before I introduce the co-valedictorians, I would like to speak to the strength and resiliency you illustrate. Class of 2020, you have been catapulted into adulthood with real world problems. Over the past month, I see you working throughout our community while finishing rigorous coursework at home. We have future medical doctors in this class, as well as future truck drivers. As we have recently observed in our country, we need all of you to keep our economy and health thriving. It has been an honor and a joy to be your school counselor, watching you grow, mature and grapple with global and personal reflection. As a group, you are the most resilient class I have worked with. You are strong, creative, intelligent, and responsible. It is my hope that each one of you creates a life of love, service, and gratitude. In a class this high achieving, it makes the valedictorian's achievements all the more impressive. We have co-valedictorians this year, two students with the highest GPA the first valedictorian will be studying mathematics at the well-respected University of Alaska Fairbanks. Please welcome the class of 2020's valedictorian, Duncan Forrest. Like the six foot nine gown and this little bit too small cap I have on, this year has been weird. Very original joke, I know. But now that we've gotten the elephant in the room out of the way, we can focus on why I'm here. 
According to ThoughtCo, my purpose here is to discuss our shared experiences and to convey a sending off message. Yes, I would like us to remember all of the experiences we went through together, but I feel like everyone's individual experiences are something we should all think about. Some of us may have absolutely loved going to school, and some of us may have absolutely dreaded the thought of it. This does not mean that some of us were right or some of us were wrong. We all view this experience through different eyes. In the future, when you think about these last few years, both the good and the bad, I hope you remember what helped shape your ambitions. Along the way to achieving your goals, there will be people who will tell you what to do and how to envision your future. They will compare you to others, put you down, and try to control every action you take. While it may be difficult to challenge these people, don't let anyone demean you, don't let anyone tell you your grievances are invalid, and especially don't let anyone tell you how to live your own life. Your goals after graduating today should be, one of, should be of your own choosing and of your own choice alone. No matter how much others will critique your ambitions from saying it's a waste of your potential to claim you can't accomplish them, just know that you're the only person who truly knows what you want. Some will compare your aspirations and accomplishments to others, but you aren't those other people. What you want to achieve is different from the person you're being compared to. In the coming years, you'll most likely hit roadblocks. The lack of support, the constant comparisons, they may flood your emotions all at once and cause you to reconsider your choices. For some of you, there are people in your lives who do support you and your ambitions, but for others, it may feel hopeless trying to establish a network of people who will support you and your ambitions. But you will find these people, your neighbors, coworkers, distant relatives, even people you know from a graduating class are just some examples where you can and will find people who will support you. These people will help you remember why you chose to follow your ambitions in the first place because they're yours, not someone else's. Get mad at the people who tried to tell you who you are. Get mad at the people who tried to tell you you didn't matter. Get mad at yourself for even doubting yourself in the first place. Use this anger to blaze a path towards your future and show them who's who. I know you're all gonna prove them wrong and become your own trailblazers, but remember, you still got a ways to go and don't you dare stop. Oh, but don't go and do anything dangerous. You don't wanna get caught up in a racket now, do you? I wish you all the best of luck. Now I'd like to introduce our co-valedictorians. He will be studying computer engineering and mathematics at Texas A&M. Please welcome Hudson Spillers. Mr. Okison, Mr. Simmons, teachers, administrators, friends and family, and of course, the class of 2020. It is a great honor to be chosen to represent this class and very humbling considering the caliber of my peers. If the most talented or hardworking were chosen to speak, it wouldn't be me. Someone else would be here speaking due to a much more impressive accomplishment than a GPA. Though my uncanny ability to put in just enough effort for, 90, for a 90% could be considered impressive. It's pretty much my superpower. Whatever my achievements, aside from God, there is one person in particular who deserves recognition. I don't have words to describe the extent of my mother's love, patience, dedication, and support. Thanks, Mom. I love you. As I was preparing this speech, it became pretty clear that I lacked the authority to speak on most subject matter, especially that which would be considered useful or interesting. Indeed, the world will little note nor long remember what I say here. As a geek, I can't at you with tips on being cool or fitting in with society. I think I said that right. And as an 18-year-old with no life experience to draw from, I don't have much great wisdom to impart upon you. So I would like to share some borrowed wisdom, a poem that has been an inspiration to me for many years. A copy of it hangs framed alongside a mirror on the wall next to my bedroom. It is periodically raised, so the mirror is always at eye level as a challenge for my brother and me to look ourselves in the eye and examine our character. Though written by a father for his son, it stands as an injunction to all of us to strive for a life of higher honor. This poem, is General Douglas MacArthur's A Prayer for My Son. Build me a son, O Lord, who will be strong enough to know when he is weak and brave enough to face himself when he is afraid. One who will be proud and unbending in honest defeat and humble and gentle in victory. Build me a son whose wishes will not take the place of deeds, a son who will know thee and that to know himself is the foundation stone of knowledge. Lead him, I pray, not in the path of ease and comfort, but under the stress and spur of difficulties and challenge. Here let him learn to stand up in the storm. Here let him learn compassion for those who fail. 
build me a son whose heart will be clear, whose goals will be high, a son who will master himself before he seeks to master other men, one who will reach into the future, yet never forget the past. And after all of these things are his, give him, I pray, enough of a sense of humor so that he may always be serious, yet never take himself too seriously. Give him humility so that he may always remember the simplicity of true greatness, the open mind of true wisdom, and the meekness of true strength. Then I, his father, will dare to whisper, I have not lived in vain. Class of 2020, I wish you all the best as you build your futures. This next person I would like to introduce is our salutatorian. She has been accepted to Cornell, University of Washington, Johns Hopkins, Duke, and Harvard. Yes, Harvard. She will be studying human development and regenerative biology at Harvard. Please welcome Kira Fagerstrom. Hello everyone, I'm Kira and I'm your salutatorian. And I wrote this speech like I did most of my homework during high school, the night before it was due. But I think that's how some of my best work has been produced. It was about 5 p.m. and I was just starting to brainstorm ideas, wondering why I was just now sitting down to do the very last and probably most important assignment of my high school career. Procrastination, although regrettable, is a choice I made and one that got me all the way through high school. I started thinking about all the other choices we made and how they've gotten us to where we are today. Unlike my study habits, one choice I don't regret is coming to tech. I know most of us probably took Senora Verplanke's Spanish one class, and you'll probably remember her saying, surround yourself with eagles, not with chickens. What I like most about being at tech, even more than the free pancake days, is that we all chose to be here. We chose to surround ourselves with eagles. We chose pathways, pro dress, and no pep rallies over a more conventional high school experience. But most of all, we chose to have choices. Because of everything that we've learned and accomplished here, the people we've met and the connections we've made, our options for the, for the future are truly unlimited. Whether we choose to be nurses, engineers, accountants, veterinarians, helicopter pilots, or pastry chefs, I know that we'll find success because over the last four years, we've become a class of professionals, leaders, and eagles, and I can't wait to see where we'll soar to next. Mrs. Corolla told me one time that everything happens just because a few molecules happen to bump into each other at exactly the right time. This was during biology class, of course, but I think it can be applied to more than just science. We're here today because four years ago, we all happened to walk into an interview, and I'm so glad we all spent the next four years interacting and learning together. So congratulations, and here's to all of the choices that have brought us this far. And may, be, may, may we all be as wise as our eighth grade selves in making all of the choices to come. Every year, the senior class selects a faculty member to address the class for a final time. This year's student-selected speaker has been an educator for 30 years in the Matsu Valley and has truly dedicated his life to education. It is my pleasure to introduce you to our principal, Mr. Mark Okasin. Thank you, Casey. Good evening. Uh, as Casey just stated, uh, this is a graduation for me too, for I'm leaving the field of education at the end of this year, and this is a new beginning for both of us. This is my first time being a graduation speaker. I'd like to tell you a story about a way to evaluate the quality of your time. The story has a simple punchline, but the story is far from simplistic. This is a story I've only shared with a handful of friends over the years usually in an attempt to help them navigate their own very difficult times. So to begin, I'd like to remind you of a story that Coach Livingston told us at last year's graduation, a wonderful speech that challenged us not to climb the ladder of success, only to discover that our ladder had been leaning against the wrong wall. For me, this important lesson has never been made more relevant than through a very brief friendship with an elderly lady named Betty. This is Betty's story. The story begins in Vero Beach, Florida a place that's always been very special to me um, nearly my entire adult life. I've experienced some of the best and worst times of my life there. Even though I only visit the place once or twice a year, it's a place that floats on the river of my thoughts in both good and bad times, the definition of a true place of significance. I met, Bunny at, uh, I met Betty at one of my life's lowest points. It was a time when I was failing in nearly every aspect of living. My career was snake bit. My personal life was upside down. I didn't know who my friends were or if I would have many after all was settled. 
and my financial life was about to hit a reset button that threatened to set me back potentially unrecover in unrecoverable ways. It's been nearly 15 years since this experience, and it still makes my palms sweat to talk about it. And consequently, I nearly never talk about that time period. But I was in Vero Beach during that tumultuous time, doing some work to my condo, a condo I didn't even know if I was going to be able to keep after all the dust settled. I was putting in long days, demolishing things and putting them back together. Near the end of the week I spent there, I attended an evening pool party. The condo's community pool is only 30 yards from my front door, so I walked over there one evening after a long day of remodeling work. I only knew about one elderly person at the party, and everyone there was elderly. And yet, uh, somewhere during the evening, a lady in her 80s approached me and said, Hi, Mark. My name is Betty, and I hear you're remodeling. I said, yes, I am. I'm getting close to being done. I just have to pick some final paint colors. At the mention of my pending paint decisions, Betty enthusiastically told me her condo had very bright colors and asked if I would like to see them later and get some possible ideas. I said, sure. About an hour later, as the party was winding down, Betty asked me, or came up to me and asked if I was ready to go look at her condo. I said, yes, I'm ready. Now, this part of the story has absolutely nothing to do with the moral of the story, but it's just too adorable to leave out. Because at the time, I must have been in my late 30s, maybe early 40s, and Betty said to me, now Mark, I should probably warn you, I'm a single woman living on my own. Are you going to be comfortable being in my apartment, just the two of us? So I smiled a little and said, yeah, I think I know what to do. So Betty took me to her condo, a beautifully decorated space with red and yellow and peach walls. Very bold, yet very tasteful. Betty was proud, yet bo not boastful of her decor. As I looked around Betty's condo, I saw a framed copy from the cover of the magazine, Architectural Digest. The picture showed a beautiful white hillside home with a pool, four garages, and I think maybe even a helipad. It was a beautiful home by any measure, a true custom-built masterpiece. So I asked Betty, is this your dream home? To which Betty replied, that was my home. We lived there for over 30 years, just outside of Seattle. I said, wow, this is phenomenal. What a mansion. She says, yes, it was nice, but I couldn't live there anymore. I paused, then gingerly asked, how long ago did you leave this home? proceeding carefully, assuming a death might have something to do with Betty's aversion to remaining in the house. She answered, I left there about four years ago. I gently inquired just a little further. What did your husband do, I asked. She said, he's a very successful architect. I said, he is? Still? Yes, he's still working part-time and living in the Seattle area. So then a long pause ensued. And then Betty, reading my body language, replied, yes, that means I got divorced. That house looks beautiful, but everything had to be white. Everything in it had to be a certain way, a way that looked perfect. It was not perfect, she said. I replied, I see, that's too bad. Folks like me see such opulence and usually assume it must be accompanied by equally impressive happiness. Betty said, most people assume that. And she said, I also know what you're thinking. Everyone asks the same things. They say, Betty, why would you, after all the years, the kids, the success, the money, the memories, and at this age, why would you get divorced now? Betty paused and got a faraway look in her eyes, a look that said she had considered this from every angle for many years and had clearly worked out an answer for such questions that she got with great frequency. Then she answered all those questions by simply saying, because I wanted a few good years. When she said that, the way she said it, I intuitively knew that this was one of those nuggets of wisdom that only, only the elderly can give with such conviction and confidence. It gave me tremendous reassurance that difficult decisions can come at any stage of life, and I most certainly was in need of them at the time. I was in need of such lighthouse sage advice. After that week, I never saw Betty again. I expect that Betty is no longer with us. But that story, that line of wanting a few good years, is one of the handful of stories I have ever heard 
that holds some of the most significance of anything I have ever heard on this earth. I've shared it with close friends, and now I share it with you. You and I have many good years ahead. Our lives are changing from here forward, but with big change can come big progress. I wish I could be looking at you face to face right now, but if we see each other again, it would mean a lot to me if you could remind me of Betty's story. Show me that you remember, even though the odds are against you remembering. Say something like, I remember Betty's story and the punchline, a few good years. I hope this is something you can carry with you for a long time. Betty's story is one of my most valuable possessions. And because you have also been one of my life's greatest experiences, I give you one of my best stories. I hope you can get, get as much mileage out of it as I have. I want to thank you for the honor of entrusting me with some of your time tonight. I'm very proud of you and indebted to you for how you have brought such distinction to our school. I will miss career tech. Be good to each other. Don't hurt anybody. Take care. Be well. Goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen of our school board, I have reviewed each of the transcripts of the students you are about to meet and can certify that they have met all of the state and local requirements for high school graduation and that they should be afforded all the rights and honors commensurate with such accomplishment. I'm here to testify that the students about to be presented before you have fulfilled the legal requirements for high school graduation. Matsu School Board Member Kelsey Trimmer, I'd like to present to you the Matsu Career and Technical High School Class of 2020. Mark Okison, as a school board member of the Matanuska Susitna Borough School District, I hereby proudly accept the Matsu Career and Technical High School Class of 2020. Something unique here at Career Tech is that we graduate by pathway. Please welcome our assistant principal, Mr. Jim Simmons, who will be reading our graduates' names by the pathway from which they are graduating. I would like to present our students graduating in the building pathway. Amber Anderson. Ivan Anderson. Clifford Benson. Lincoln Boland. Caleb Bredding. Caleb Burris. Elena Butler. Isaac Falk. Casey Ann Gooch. Evan Haller. Carter Houston, Katie Madry, Logan Miller, Emerson Mosier, David Novak, Kyle Rudolph, Eden Sampson, Dakota Saunders, Hudson Spillers, Oliver Strunk, Ryland Sunberg, Emma Sky Bilalovis, Kenneth Vincent, Zachary Youngblood. I would like to present our students graduating in the business pathway. Kobe Anderson, Kirsty Anderson, Juliana Baker, Alex Bear Snyder, Hans Beer, Madison Billsboro, Reuben Blackwell, Langston Boma, Devin Carney, Antonio Collier, Madison Covey, Duncan Forrest, Araya C. Hildreth, Karina Holcomb, Aaron Koivinen, Callum Larson, Gracie Lemoyne, Carly McClure, Robert Molina, Gavin Mulhaney, Owen Mulhaney, Timothy Palco, John Pearl, Reese Sandy, Michael Spray, Sammy Swanson, Peyton Talbot, Chimu Tao, Samantha Tracy, Joseph Walling, Marion Warris, Susanna Winger, K. 
Callie Wirtman, Brendan Luke Wolcott, Randy Wu. I would like to present our students graduating in the fitness pathway. Megan Rose Bang, Liam Dawkins, Reggie Drummond, Lily Anna Ingebrigtsen, Brad Eichner, Jada Flowerdew, Noah Keenan, Carrie Mayer, Harmony McSorley, Ethan Messick, Liam Terry. I would like to present our students graduating in the health pathway. Avery Atkins, Madison Dawn Beatty, Lane Booth. Joshua Brintro, Samantha Bryant, Alex Cadu, Zanya Codwell, Cheyenne Klein, Layla Comerford, Shayla Donnelly, Oliver Enox, Kira Fagerstrom, Carrie Fletcher, Karina Gorolova, Madeline Goss, Serena Grohall, Colton Henry, Amelia Hunt, Haley Hutchinson, Christina Jean, Anthony Jones, Carly Kraft, Hayden Keen, Jaden Lingle, Keely Livingston, Jillian Mallow, Taylor Marple, Taylor Nelson, Sydney Riley, Vincent Smedley, Claire Smith. Breeze Titus, Cooper Wallace. I would like to present our students graduating in the Human Services Pathway. Melina Withrow Demirs, Alina Zagorodny, Juliana All, Angelina Weatherberg. Dixie Brock, Jocelyn Davis, Emma Kai Ferguson, Serena Heck, Juliana Johnson, Leah Cruz, Jacob Nelson, Emma Shoemake, Allison. Vincent, Julianne Wagle. I would like to present our students graduating in the Natural Resources Pathway. Ariel Griffin, Garrett Maltby, Alex Nelius, Krista Roper. I would like to present our students graduating in the Tourism Pathway. Rachel Hartman. I would like to present our students graduating in the Transportation Pathway. Micah Bedwell. Ella K. Bowers. Karina Cruz. Jameson Hoffman, Ben Howard, Dane Jelich, Jacqueline Kack, Angela Kincaid, Katie Latchgray, 
Paige Martinez, Zach Nelius, Oleg Palco, Aaron Palmberg, Carson Craig Pell, Alex Rachmanoff, Cooper Roberts, Stephen Sandiford, Alec Sutherland, Jacob Walther. Before we formally certify you as graduates, we would ask that either you or a trusted person in the room with you move your tassel from the right to the left, a symbolic gesture that has been invoked for hundreds of years to symbolize your graduation towards your next phase in life. So, in conclusion, and with our deepest admiration, ladies and gentlemen of our CTHS learning community, I formally, yet virtually, present to you the graduated class of 2020.